Joining us for more on growing concerns that China may provide lethal aid to Russia, former National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien. Really great to have you. I want to play for you some sound from the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. This is Linda Greenhouse. We also have to be clear that if there are any thoughts and, and efforts by the Chinese and others to provide lethal support to the Russians in their brutal attack against Ukraine, that that is unacceptable. Again, uh, that would uh, be a red line. Of course, that is Linda Thomas Greenfield. Uh, Linda, Tom, uh, Linda Greenhouse works for The New York Times, so I got that confused. I'm sorry for that. But, uh, Robert, the use of the word or the phrase red line, that conjures up the Obama administration and ISIS, and you think back to what happened then, is this language necessary right now? Is it the appropriate tone? You know, we never used the word red line in the Trump administration for that very reason. Uh, folks knew where we stood, and if they, they violated our principles, we'd uh, react, and we'd do so strongly. So I, I'm not sure setting up a red line is, uh, is useful. But I'm glad to see there's, there's some backbone uh, coming out of the administration on China now, because we just had a Chinese spy balloon cross the, the width and breadth of the United States and, and linger over our nuclear sites, our nuclear-capable air bases, our missile silos in Montana, our submarine pins. Uh, very serious. And what, are the, what were the consequences for China? None. Tony Blinken met with Wang Yi in Munich instead of in Beijing. That was the only consequence, as a, mm -hmm. the venue of the meeting. So. Uh, TikTok is here. Uh, the Ford Ch Chinese Communist battery plant is coming. The farmland is still being purchased around our air bases. There have been no consequences for the Chinese, so it's little wonder that they, they think, think that they can send lethal aid to Russia without without a, a, you know some sort of penalty. Uh, it seems like uh, the area where you don't want to go is is greater escalation. But I, I think today is uh, it doesn't feel like a tipping point, but it feels like like all these events are coming together and all the players, I should say, are coming together. Uh, Dana and I read this uh, letter from the Lindsay Group that comes out every morning. Uh, I want to read the last sentence of the letter today. It says, "In any fight, the inevitable testosterone buildup." often blinds the combatants to longer-term consequences, even the most obvious ones. So to you, how dangerous is the point that we've come to now? Well, look, we've been at a dangerous point for some time, especially with China and, and Russia, its unlimited partner. I mean, one thing we have to do is we have to stand by our Ukrainian friends, and I applaud President Biden for going to Ukraine. Uh, it's the ultimate America first peace through strength uh, situation because the Ukrainians are fighting for their own freedom. They're, they're fighting against conquest, against a neighbor trying to subjugate them just because they can, because they're bigger. And, and the, they're not asking for U.S. troops. They're not asking for a U.S. no-fly zone. They're simply asking for us to be the arsenal of democracy, which has been our historic role. And as we supply them with their the material and the weapon systems they need, they can fight these tyrants in, in Beijing and Russia. But we're also sending a message to China that you can't do this to Taiwan, which is, is coming. And, and we've got to make sure that we shall resolve with Ukraine to deter China from invading Taiwan. So this is a very, it's a very dangerous situation. It's an important situation. But we can't give up our peace through strength principles, and we can't be blackmailed by these dictators. Uh, we have to be willing to stand with our allies and our friends and, and stand up for freedom in the world. We, we, we've got a way of life to protect, and we're not going to turn it over. To, we're not going to turn America over to China and mm -hmm. its bullying. It's interesting you bring up uh, you know, Taiwan because the Chinese foreign minister, he said this, that China is deeply worried about the escalation of the Ukrainian conflict and it possibly spiraling out of control. We urge certain countries to immediately stop fueling the fire, stop shifting blame to China, and stop touting Ukraine today, Taiwan tomorrow. What message do you think the Biden administration takes away from the foreign minister of China saying that? Well, look, the Chinese have been saying, and ever since Xi Jinping was elected to his third term and basically became a dictator for life, a new Mao, uh, that they were going to take Taiwan, they were going to coerce reunification with this democratic ally of ours, which is geopolitically critically for the America for the American people. It's it's the cork in the Pacific that that would allow if it, it pops open, the PLA Navy would run wild from California to the Aleutians to. Hawaii, all the way down to our allies in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, it's geopolitically critical for America. They also build 90 percent of the small chips that are used in the world, uh, semiconductor chips that, that our economy relies on. So for China to be able to take that, to, to control the Pacific and to control the supply of chips, not, needless to say, to destroy democracy uh, would be untenable for America. So, uh, you know, Biden has said we're going to fight. He said it four times. It's been, it's been walked back by his staff four times. Yeah. Which, uh, wouldn't have worked out very well with my, my former boss. I don't think that would have 
No, no you, well, when I think you, it's when time you to consider let Biden be that, Biden when it comes to Taiwan. Yeah, last question on this. When you consider all this, um, how do you think the Biden team is doing? Well, look, I think they've been good. They get a, a B plus on, on Ukraine. And I, I think Jake Sullivan has been pretty hawkish on Ukraine and on China. But I think, you know, the John Kerry's and, and some of the others in the administration that want to go back to how it used to be with China, where we turned a blind eye to their intellectual property theft and, and their expansion and their human rights abuses. I think that's a problem. So we need to go back to peace through strength. Ronald Reagan had this right. We need to show resolve. We need to, you know, show, show through our actions, not through our words that we're prepared to stand by our friends and allies, and that's rebuilding our military, rebuilding our Navy, deploying the hypersonics, and, and doing the things that we need to do to show the Chinese uh, that we're not going to stand by where they, they attempt to bully us. It just we, we can't allow that to happen. Robert O'Brien, thank yes. you for joining us this yes. morning. There's a lot going on, and you helped bring some clarity to it. We appreciate it. Come on back soon. Thank you, sir. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.